Hi, so welcome to uh, making projects making or ideas for making projects using two and a half inch strips. We're doing 20 different projects and this is project number nine. There's more information on the website on gourmetquarter.com if you're interested. Other than that, let's get going. So today we're going to make new friends. So this is my new friend, her name is Abby. And actually Abby loves friends, so she has another friend as well. But her friend is really very similar to her, just different colours. So we're going to start off with Abby, and you may find you need a new friend. And these friends, they listen to everything, they talk to you, they just take it all on board, and they're just always there for you. She is having an interesting little hair day, and she's ready to admit that, however. So what we're going to do, if you've already signed up on Gourmet Quilter to receive the pattern, you will have a pattern that shows you how to make this little, um, this little lady out of some strips. She's all made from strips. And so she has some lovely shoes on. She's got her legs. She's got her body, most attractive underneath there, arms. And the head is attached to the body. It's all one piece. And then the hair, and then she's wearing a nice little dress. So on the pattern, we've got a shape here that um, we can trace some things for the body. But I think we're just going to start on the legs first and the arms and get them out of the way. It's always good to start with your shoes. I think we're going to start shoes first. So we need to pop the shoe. So on the pattern, it tells you all about the cutting. We put, we attach the shoe to the leg. She's having stripy leggings this time. Um, so I've already attached that shoe onto the bottom part of the leg, and I've already um, made one of the legs. But what we have to do once that shoe is attached is fold it over in half, and then stitch down the side, and then just curve the bottom bit here. So I'll just do that just to show you so that you know exactly what I mean. Just make sure that the shoe is lined up at the seam there. So I'm going to come most of the way down, but before I get to the corner, I'm going to stop and just angle it a bit. And then stop again and come across the end there a bit. And then angle it again and come across and then just end it off with a little back stitch there. And so what that will give me when I turn it out the right way is a nice little sort of rounded edge there. So to turn it, it's good to trim off any corners so that because they just make extra bulk. And then you might find that it's quite tricky to turn. You may have uh, something like a pencil that will work for you. So not nothing too sharp. And you can pop that in there. Or you may have a stick of some sort. I have a couple of little very tasty treat sticks uh, that work quite well. Just pop it in once you can get it started. Something like this or a chopstick works really well. Any Anything like that that's not a sharp end on it. And then once you've turned it out the right way with that little tool, whatever it is that you're using, just run it around the seam and that gives you a reasonable ending on the end there. And it's now ready to put some filling in. Um, and I might just start doing that a little bit. So when you're filling, and I have what I call a stuffing stick here, or someone else called it a stuffing stick, but you can use, as I said, whatever it is that this little tool is that you're using. Um, just do really small bits. It may seem a little tedious. However, you'll end up with a better result if you just put small bits in at a time. So particularly on small projects like this, they are a little bit uh, fiddly possibly. But just a little bit of stuffing, push it all the way down. And then another little bit of stuffing. And they are just little bits. And what this will give you is it helps us, if we've teased that stuffing out a little bit, so that it is just light and airy. And even though we're squashing it back in again, we get a much better, smoother fill than if we put larger lumps in because then they all go lumpy, because it kind of lumps back together again. So if they're just smaller bits, in general, we get a smoother finish. So just take your time. This is the sort of sitting, relaxing part, just doing all the filling. Probably not something to do under pressure necessarily. And then you'll get a nice, relatively smooth edge. You can see here that um, possibly not going to win any fashion shows but it is quite smooth. And that's just by just doing small bits at a time and pushing it 
down as, as you go. Um, so I won't keep going on the stuffing just now because I think that's something you can uh, you can work out for yourself and as I said just little bits at a time. So we do a similar process on the arms. So to do the arms and the pattern does tell you all this I've just folded back a quarter of an inch on the top edge of the arm first and then I've already done my seam. I've done exactly the same sort of seam as we did on the leg. I've come along and I've done my curve around. Same thing, I can trim off my corners here so that it'll, it's always going to be just a little bit less than super smooth on something fiddly like this but in general this gives us a fairly good res result and again that is now ready to turn out the right way so it's just a matter of finding something that you can help with that that pushes that through quite nicely. As you can see it goes through fairly easily once you've got something to push in there and then push that out as well so I don't really want to labour the point on this you need to also fill both the arms and the legs so I've already done another little set here just to show you so she's got nice firm legs here but the top bit is not it's quite spongy so that if I was to push that in I'd have about half an inch there with no filling and you want that so that there's a little bit of movement when we sew that in it needs to be able to move. If it's too full it would just get too hard. So, And the same thing, so that now the top of the legs is not folded in, that's a raw edge there. The top of the arms is folded in because we're going to be stitching those on. Um, I'll show you that afterwards. Uh, we're going to be stitching those on and so it's helpful but again that top half inch is not filled. So that's sitting there for that. We'll get her filled up, give us some breakfast later. Then we'll work on the on the body and the hair. We need to do the hair as well. So we can get the hair ready first, although we what we can do is trace the body shape. So on the pattern, there's a shape here for tracing. So we've, we've got a length of a strip of fabric. And I've got a light box here, so you, a light source is helpful for this. And I have actually already done it, but I will just show you. So on, here, on the pattern is a stitching line. And it's that stitching line we want to trace. So we want to trace that onto the wrong side of our piece of fabric for her head and body. And so, as I said, I have actually already traced it, but if you've got a light source, that will help show that through. So we're actually going to stitch on that line that we've traced. But before we do that, we need to get her hair ready. So now the hair, the way I've done it, I've actually used three different fabrics, three different colours. In fact, I've got a blue, a purple and a pinky red. Um, this one here, she has definitely gone all out. She's got pinky, purple, red and uh, greeny colour. So she's really having a wonderful time with her hair. So I've sewn all three pieces together. I've got two blues and a purple here. Just with a narrow seam here because it's just a holding edge. We're not trying to have that showing anywhere. And then we just want to cut on a diagonal lots of little slits. So to about a quarter of an inch away from the edge, so not, not right up at the stitching, but close by. And these cuts are approximately a quarter of an inch away, and it's just cutting, cutting, cutting. So I'll keep going and get the rest of that cut, um, and then show you that we trim off some of the ends as well. So I've been busy cutting all my little diagonal strips. On the pattern it does also show you a part for the hair as well so that you can see that. So I've cut all the strips there that I need to cut but we don't need these triangles at the end. So when you get to this last cut here, um, I suggest that you just come in and then just trim off, leave the stitching part there, but just trim off the end there. And the same thing on this end, we've kind of cut in a couple that are a little bit shorter there. And then we just, on this last cut here, we can just cut that down just so that there's a little bit of room to move with the seam allowance and then we don't need those bits. And so now we can pop her hair in behind her face. So we might want to find the central part of her hair so that that goes on top of her head. So the hair comes out of the seam basically and what we're going to do is put that to the centre top of her head there and probably pop a pin in there for the moment. 
And then we're going to bring that around, even though you can't see that line, you know where it is to the side. That should pretty much come around fairly well to that side for you. And another pin, and then a pin in between. And then do the same thing on this side here. This hair, this hair gets everywhere. Have you noticed how hair gets everywhere? So pop a pin coming in from the outside on that end and again one on that curve in between. And this just helps hold it in place while we sew the two body parts together. So now we've got her hair looking most attractive. Let's fix this pin here. Most attractive, I have to say. We want to put it right sides together with our other body face piece. And we'll pop those pins back in through everything again. So a little bit of double pinning, but you've got to see where you're going when you put it on in the first place. Um, you don't have to do this pinning, but it does help because it gets a little bit congested in there. So we're going to be stitching on that line that we drew. Um, we can pin all of it now, but we are going to have a whole issue with all of that. So I'm probably going to just leave half of it there, but I have to move all of this out of the way of where I'm going to be sewing in for her neck. We're just going to be sewing half of her first because of all this congestion with hair. Um, so it may be helpful to pop a pin just there to make sure it doesn't slide back in as you're sewing where the seam's going to go. So I'm going to start at the top of the head and I'm going to come around and do all of that all the way down one side. So I'll go ahead and do that. So on that line that we drew, so we just want to come around that curve. And there's a fairly tight curve coming in at her neck here. But if you just go slow, that's okay. I can probably take that pin out now, just make sure that your lower edges are staying together. So just follow that little curve around a little bit. And then come around her shoulders and then it's a straight run down to the lower edge. So that's looking pretty good so far. Now we can get the, the other half pin, but before we do that, I found it's quite helpful if we just fold up that lower edge and press it up just a quarter of an inch um, for when we go to pop her legs and things inside the body at that lower edge. I found it was quite helpful to have that pressed up now rather than try and do it later. So now we've got to make sure that this hair is out of the way of the stitching on the other side as well. So we, I found it just easier to twist it into a little bit of a twist inside there. And we need to pin these bits on to the side of the head here as well. And do the other side. So this is probably just a little bit, um, I guess, fiddly. But it's not too bad. So just make sure that's out of the way again of the neck seam and it is tighter this time because the other seam is in place. But again, if you pop a pin there, it will keep the neck fairly clear, I think. And this time we're just going to start, well, you could start at the top if you like, but because we're, I'm following the line, I'm going to start here, and right at the end there, and come up and follow that line all the way to the top of the head. So I might go ahead and do that because it's the same as we've just done, and I will show you the next bit. So I've finished doing my sewing, I've come around there, and now we just need to trim in around here. Not too close, um, and around this little curve up here.
And then because we want that neck to sit out quite nicely, you just need to clip into, they're not quite corners because we've kind of curved around, but a couple of clips there will work really well for helping that neck to turn out the right way. So now we just need to pull it out the right way. And the hair's there which we can give a little pull on because that'll help pull that through the neck, the head. She's got a lot of hair going on here. Right, there we go. She's popped out. So now that she's got all this wonderful looking hair, I like to just use my tool, whatever it is that I'm using, just to run around the seam and make sure that it's all sitting nicely. Pop her little shoulders out. And she's looking pretty good. So she's now ready for us to do some filling as well. So same sort of thing as we did before, just small amounts. It may seem a little tedious. Don't let it be tedious. It is just kind of nice. When we grow, we just grow a little bit at a time. So I guess she has to do the same. So you want to get it through that neck. And just keep filling it like that. I don't want to stand here filling all day long for you, but I think I think you've got the gist of just small amounts at a time. When you get to the neck, you just have to make sure the neck stays filled. So I've got one over here that I've filled but haven't sewn up yet. So that you can see that it's, it kind of wants to, to, to crinkle a little bit there and, and it probably always will do a little bit of that. But so you just want to have that nice and firm, including the neck. Um, as much as possible. And the same thing here, you just want to have a little bit of a lighter end at the, at the lower edge there. So when we're going to sew the leg, because we've now filled all our legs and our arms, we'll assume that she's filled, we're working on this model now. Um, so what I would now do, having filled everything, is I'd grab my legs. Now I've chosen to put the seam side um, inside rather than outside, it doesn't really matter, there's no rhyme or reason, it was just my choice. And there's a little stick, let's push that down, just push it down a bit, it'll move around once it's in there, but just so that you've got maximum space up there, and pop that inside with that, we've already turned that lower edge in quarter of an inch, and I would probably pop a couple of little pins in at this stage, so that it sits there, and the same on this one, pop the seamed edge either way, whether it's inside or outside, doesn't really matter, but put them both the same way, so these are both inside. And I just want to put this one in this side, they should just fit along that lower edge there, make sure it's all sitting in fairly straight and that her legs are the same length, that would be nice. And she does seem to have one leg longer than the other. This one seems a bit long. And then you can either machine across that there or you can hand stitch it. I'm going to hand stitch mine. Uh, I just have found I get a better result with a hand stitch. So just a needle and thread. And all I'd be doing is doing like a little stab stitch all the way through. And then I turn around and I come back and do another stab stitch all the way back again. So I'm not sure that you need to see me doing um, the little hand stitch particularly, I think you probably know how to do that. And then we've got her arms. So again we've got that little bit of a gap um, at the top of the arms there and also decide whether you want the seam on top or the seam underneath. Um, and I've got the seam, actually it's either to the front or the back because we end up sewing it across her shoulder. So not that way but across that way. So you can pop a pin in there so it's right across that little shoulder point. Oops. And the other one on the other side. Just push that down a bit. So I've, I've popped my seams to the back. Because this is her front. And only because I've decided, not because there's a front or back otherwise. And I can pop another pin in there. So you can get a bit of a look at how she's going to be 
and to see that your shoulders and things are fairly even both sides and that her legs are fairly even and then that they just need to be hand stitched on so again it's not a it's not a hard job just to hand stitch that on I've got a needle and thread here I can start so I'm actually using a double thread in my needle so that it's uh, got the best opportunity of a bit of strength and I'll just get it started and just stitch it right up to that corner and I have to keep her hair out of the way and, and then just stitch it along once you don't need that pin anymore it's a good idea to take it out but make sure that you're going through both the front and the back like both edges at the top of your arm here because it may want to wriggle around a little bit I'm using batik cloth for these little dolls it's so cute I love the batiks they're working well for me So I don't need to probably keep showing you this, I think you've got the hang of it now. So I've more or less done it, but I will do a little bit more on it before I finish off. I'll go back again. But it really, and then she's got good movement in her arms and you'll find the same thing with her legs there. So I've actually got one in that state so that I can show you. I've sewn the arms on, I've sewn, I've hand stitched those little legs in there with that little stab stitch arrangement. Um, and she's already to get dressed. She says she needs clothes but she's struggling a little bit with that hairdo. We might have to adjust that shortly. So, so far we've got the body made. I think you know how to do all that now. Um, and now we just need to make her dress. So this is how the dress looks once it's made. But we need to get it to that stage. So look at all these little friends I'm creating here. Oh, I'm going to have a party. So same thing we've got in, with our pattern. We've got a little shape here that we can use to make some markings if, if your dress is see-through if it's not you might just need to um, make an educated marking so this is just half of the front the front and back so the dress is two strips sewn together I've already sewn mine together I've folded over the top edge as it says in the pattern and I can now line that up so with my seam line here and that folded edge at the top there I just want to mark the stitching line and I'm going to stop before I get to the end because I want to fold this back. And then I've just marked here the cutting line, which is the solid line, not the dotted line, because I want to cut that as well. Um, just and I, I, If I do the same markings just on one half, the same, I've used two fabrics on front and back, and if you did the same one so that they alternate around the dress, you only need to mark it on one half because we'll, we'll do one half this way and then when we turn it and do the other side it's on this side here so I guess I can go ahead and do that now because if we're going to make the dress I need to have it on there so I'm just going to mark that stitching line I'm going to stop there and I'm going to mark my cutting line and it's really that simple I fold it over that top edge just press that again because it's coming out and now all we need to do is stitch that stitching line. So these are just little things. They're not meant to be the most amazing products that you ever made, but a fairly quick and easy little playmate for somebody. So I'm just coming along and I'm just going to stop that stitching just there on the shoulders. So we'll do the shoulders first, trim off that seam, and then I just want to press Oh, I was going to cut those first. Sorry. I'm going to cut, so I've got the two bits of fabric together, front and back, and I'm just going to cut away that area that the pattern says that we don't need, so that I can open this out and fold these. And this is her sleeves. So just back a quarter of an inch, both front and back, and if we had stitched that all the way down, it would just be a little bit harder to to press that back. So we're now into dressmaking. We've moved on, it seems. And I'm just going to stitch that along that fold line.
and we need to do that for the other side as well. So I'll go ahead and get the other side prepared and then show you how to put the rest of it together. So I've gone ahead and done my other shoulder, I've done the other sleeve opening, we cut away both sides. So it's kind of starting to look a little bit like a, a little dress now, but we need to do the side seams now. So I, I found it works best for me if I come in, so we're starting on the sleeve, we're coming in and then we're turning and coming down here to do one side first, then fold the hem up and then do the second side. So we'll just go ahead and, and do this. Come down this side seam. And then I find it, it's just easier if I do the pressing now while you can get at it because once it's uh, sewn on the other side. Now I've suggested just sewing up a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch for the bottom hem. Um, really a matter of how long you want the little dress to be. Could adjust that. And then to do the other side so that the hem is up nicely all the way round, it's easier to open it back out again and sew it and then we can push it up. So I'll go ahead and do the second side seam exactly like I did the last one and then show you how I'm going to get into that hem. So I've done that second seam and so now we can press that or fold that hem back again that we've just pressed and I'm going to machine stitch around. I'm going to stitch from the right side and I can just get into that on the sewing machine, just placing that fold in there. And I'm sewing about a quarter of an inch away from that lower edge. Because we did a slightly more than quarter inch turn up, we can do that. So there's nothing that hard about this, it's just you've got to keep rotating it to get to the next bit. But it's easier done if the dress is inside out like it is. Threads hanging around it seems here. So I'm just going to um, show you how we just deal with the underarm corner because we need that to turn out. So it's really just a matter of snipping right into but not into the stitching into that corner so that it can open out on both sides there. And the dress is nearly done. We just need to run a little gathering thread around the neck which is best done by hand I found. And what I find also helps is just to press maybe the top half because it's kind of nice that it's just going around a little bit open there. But we just want to press this little underarm seam more than anything because we did that little clip so it should come out quite nicely there. So just press in there so that it sits quite well there. And then we just need to snip off any threads that are flying around there. And I've got a needle and thread set, either a stronger thread or a double thread. I've got a double thread. And if there's a front and a back, start on the back. And I start on the inside of the neck edge. And I'm just going to do a little... So I've got a knot in the end of my thread, but I don't want to pull it up tight. I want the ends hanging because we're going to tie it off. So I leave an end. And then I'm just doing a little stitch not too close together so that we can gather this up once it's on the doll and tie it up so that she's not generally going to be undressed she likes to wear her dress she's fairly modest she doesn't really want it on and off all the time so just a gathering stitch all the way around so I'll, I'll finish that later because I've got one that's already done here that's going to go on to this little lady here with her little red stripy legs so if you've got a front and a back, with if you've used different colours like I have and you want one side more than the other as the front, you need to make that decision. And then I've already done my thread, so that my threads are just hanging here so that I can tie them off once that dress is on her. So I'm going to put it on, I'm going to have the lime green at the front. And I found that she's best dressed by stepping into her dress like this.
if you wanted her to be undressable you could probably pop an elastic or something around that neck instead of the, the straight stitching. And then I'm just going to move that hair out of the way. That hair is amazing. And I'll need my thread. So I knotted both ends, so the one when I started sewing, and I knotted the other one when I took the needle off as well. So I'm just going to put a little first bit of the tie in there, and I'm just going to pull that up. So don't throttle her. She does not like it if she can't breathe. Spread those gathers around a little bit so that you're happy with that look. And because we started and finished with it inside, this knot will go inside the dress quite nicely. So then just tie it off so that it won't come undone. And then you can probably just snip those threads. And she is now, she is dressed, but she has no face. She can't see yet. So that's looking pretty um, good so far. I'll just show you how, how to do the face. So we have a little set of dolly makeup here. Um, she has a little eye marking, lip marking, and cheek marking, uh, if you want to do all those things. So when we put the eyes, so there is a little face on the pattern. When we put eyes, these are just simple eyes. We've got this little lady here. She's got eyes, mouth, and cheeks. This one has just got eyes and mouth, no cheeks. Um, so often, if I'm not sure, now eyes in general are halfway down your head. We don't often think that they are, but they are. Um, so roughly halfway down, it doesn't have to be an exact measurement thing. You can pop a couple of pins in as if they were her eyes. She's very forgiving of this sort of behaviour. So I think, whoops, <laughs> that that looks pretty good to me for where, I, where the eyes might go. So by popping a pin in there, you most likely have left a little mark. You can make it make a mark, wiggle the pin around a little bit so that you can see where that spot is. And then I've got these Pigma pens, they're a permanent fabric marking pen, and you just want to mark, that pinhole will disappear very shortly. So just do her eye, don't make them too big, you can always make them bigger. And do the same thing with the other one. Just a little round dot is all I'm doing. You might have a preferred face you would like to do, but I like these little simple ones. And then she can have a little mouth. Now she could just have a little line. She could have a little heart-shaped mouth. Or she can have a little smile and little smiley cheek bits. Or not. And then if, you th if, if she's got little rosy cheeks, um, just with some sort of a blush makeup y type thing, um, a powder. This is a little cream one. If it's a cream one, you do need to um, just make sure you haven't got too much and the cotton bud on there. So, I've got a soggy cotton bud. We'll use the other end. Just a little bit on there. You really don't need very much. And just rub a little bit off because you don't want a great hefty blush on her cheek. And then just gently rub that on. And you can come back and apply more if it's not strong enough. But rather than going in heavy, you can't easily get it off. So now she's probably got one cheek slightly rosier than the other, so I can just come back and do another little bit there. And it's that simple to give her little rosy cheeks if that's what you'd like to do with your little friend. She's your friend after all. She needs your help. So then you've just got to make a decision whether you want to do anything with her hair. On this one here, I have cut some strands a little bit shorter around her face as if it's a little fringe just on that front colour. It's really going to be up to you. So we might just do that on this one so that you can see me doing it. So I've just got that hanging around. Now I would cut them at a bit of an angle. I wouldn't necessarily cut them straight across. And I might cut the side a bit lo longer. I probably wouldn't make any of them too short. Now because we cut the, the hair on a diagonal when we were trimming or making the hair, um, and then you can decide she might have bunches, she might have 
however. Um, when we were making the hair we cut it on the diagonal, those slits that we cut, and what that does is it puts it on the bias so that it won't fray. It'll just get a little bit furry maybe with, with use, but it, um, it shouldn't fray all away. So that was the reason for cutting everything on the angle. Should have mentioned that earlier probably. Um, so there we have it. We have three little friends already. I have new friends. It's so exciting to have friends. Um, so that was Abby and her friends. So thank you. Don't forget she can have some wonderful stripy leggings on. She can have bright coloured shoes. She can have bright coloured hair. She could be a whole lot more sedate. She might not have any of those things. Up to you. She's your friend. So that was um, that was project number nine um, with a with the two and a half inch strips. So I will see you again with project number ten.